Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today what I have for you is episode 8 of my Football Manager 23 save with FC Eindhoven. And if you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and 20 likes on today's episode, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 700 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get a comment in as well down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the YouTube algorithm now since you were last with us we had some transfer business and we've for the large part of it kept up our form with how we ended the last episode i dare to say it but we're currently in a battle for european football in our first season in the air division after being promoted in season one by winning the league we're currently battling for promotion not promotion battling for european football we're in a top four challenge in the race i know we're only seven games in but in today's episode, we've got a league match and a cup match. So make sure to drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you are new as well. And let's get into it. So as you all know, Peter Bogowers was out of contract with us in the summer. He was on one of them pay-as-you-play sort of contracts, really. And he decided to leave the football club on his own accord. I actually wanted to keep him, to be fair, on and on contract because we don't really have another option to play at left midfield. And he was an OK squad player to come on every now and again. He made one appearance for us in the league or a 6.6 .6 rating. I presume it was off the bench and apart from that I mean he played a decent amount of times for his last season 20 appearances but he's got, decided to move on by his own accord and he's not even found a new club yet the other departure did see youngster Forel Mateus leave the club. He's gone over to PEZ Zwolo in the Dutch second division. £195,000 for him. I personally think this is a good piece of business. It could potentially rise up to £235,000. Then we get 50% of the profit that they sell him on for. I did quite like him. He was a good option at left midfield, but he wanted to leave the club and only four star potentially. I don't think it was the end of the world. He's gone into their reserve straight away. We needed the money and we've well and truly spent up with our transfer budget and wage budget as well. In terms of signings then, on deadline day we completed the loan signing of Crystal Palace youngster Luke Plange on loan for the remainder of the campaign. Comes in and is another option to play at striker, left footed at 6 foot. Decent physicals, pretty nice mentals, these technicals aren't the greatest but as a youngster just to chuck on to run around a bit. He can't do really any harm, can he? Five appearances, no goals, no assist, 6.6 .6 rating. All five appearances off the bench, to be fair. And obviously, he had a move from Derby County recently as well when Derby were in financial troubles in real life. But he's come in on a loan deal until the end of the season. We're not paying any of his wages as well, which is obviously a reason why I wanted to get him in. Now, last season, three of our main players were all on loan. Lamine Doyabi Fadiga, Nayouf Albanis and Thibaut Persin. The one out of the three that we've been able to get back on loan is Thibaut Persin. We needed... A right midfield option with Virginia being injury prone and Doran Bosch not really being the greatest. Thibaut Persin has rejoined the club on loan for the remainder of the campaign. We don't have to pay any of his wages as well. He's also out of a contract with Italy in the summer, so uh, not with Italy, with Inter in the summer, so potentially we might be able to get him in on a permanent basis. The 21 year old has joined on loan where. I mean, he, sh he is struggling so far. Last season, obviously, four goals, 15 assists in 33 matches, averaging at 7.33. This season, um, not just no goals, no assists in five matches, averaging a 6.86. When I'm physically watching him play, he looks absolutely terrible. I'm not going to lie to you, he looks shocking. But fingers crossed he can refine his form from last season. And the final signing that we have made, at least as of right now, is Fabian Kloss. Um, we've signed him for one reason and one reason only. He's six foot five. He's not really good at anything. He can't really head the ball, to be honest with you. While having really good mentals okay physicals and a good finishing and heading ability apparently he's not very good 35 years of age three thousand pounds per week on a deal until the end of the season four star current ability he provides another option to chuck up there in case is it laken mitcher isn't really doing the business he made two appearances in the league averaging a 6.3 so yeah that's not great from a transfer point of view so far but in terms of how we've been getting on then since you were last with us obviously we started out our league campaign with this 3-2 win at home to az we then had a 1-1 draw away to FC Utrecht, scoring quite late on in that game. We just chucked a load of youngsters onto it. Joep van der Berg came on and actually scored in the game. It's the scrappiest goal you've ever seen. He's not very good, to be honest with you. So the fact he scored a goal is probably going to be the best thing he ever does in his career. After that draw, though, we had a 3-0 defeat away to SC Camber before a 7-3 friendly win at home to PEZ Zwolot during the international break. We then had a 3-2 win away at FC Volendam, which was obviously very nice for a 2-0 win at home to Sparta Rotterdam Ruben Messer scoring a brace in that one we then had a 0-0 draw at home to FC MN before a 4-1 defeat away to FC 20 where Luca 
Unbehoun, uh, yeah, really, really bad game. He was at fault for a couple of them goals, although Laker Matcher had a 6.2. No one got above a 7 in that game. We also recently played a friendly against FC Groningen, where we got a 2-0 home win, which was obviously very nice. In today's episode, then, we have Fortuna Sittard at home. They're currently 18th in the table, and Willem 2 away from home. They're currently 17th in the table. Obviously, we were promoted last season with Willem 2, so two fairly easy games on paper for us here, considering where we are in the table. Currently 6th in the Air Divisi. I think we're level on points with fourth place we are just goal difference it separates us and fourth place i'm not really too sure what fourth place gets you it might be the europa league i'm not really too sure to be honest with you. if you have a look at the structure uh, it doesn't really give you too much help but i'm gonna presume one and two is champions league three and four is the europa league if i was to hazard a guess let's get into the first game though of today's episode is it home to FC, no, at home to Fortuna Sittard, that's the one. Here we have it then, here's how we line up for today's game at home to Fortuna Sittard. We've gone with a 3-4-3 formation with Luca in goal, a back three of Seedorf, Rigo, who's no longer concerned about his lack of playing time. He thought that because we didn't give him a new contract, his playing time was going to go, which didn't really make sense to me. We've also got Gibson, who is now four-star current ability, which is obviously very nice. Perzin on the right, Rottier on the left, Johnson and Oostenbrink in the midfield, with a front three of R Rodriguez, Laker, Matcha and Messer. Been very impressed with Messer over the last couple of games, averaging a 7.4 in his last couple of matches. He's got some good options on the bench as well. Let's get underway for today's game. Hopefully we can carry on our form. Two wins in today's episode will put us in a very, very nice position. Like I mentioned at the start of the season though, the absolute minimum for this season was just to avoid relegation. Anything other than that is a bonus. So we'll get underway for today's game. We'll tell all the boys that we've got more than enough confidence in them to make the make the difference in today's game. They seem to be taking to me more and more as each game does go by. They seem to be getting more motivated and pleased with what I have to say. We are now underway though for today's game. Fingers crossed we can pick up another three points. Throwing here for Fortuna Sittard. It is played short to Vivian. Ball comes into the box. It's a bit of a deflected one there and Oostenbrink obviously gets underneath it he's been brilliant so far this season in the centre of our midfield shot comes in and that's what I'm talking about I'm convinced he doesn't have any hands Luca Uberhoun just not very good literally every shot that seems to be on target goes into the back of our net there's no power in that it's not right in the corner it's straight at him it's fairly weak and somehow He's done that. Free kick at four is here. Johnson with a ball into the box towards the back post. That one is cleared away though. And Yilmaz will chase after that. Persin puts it back out wide into Johnson. Can he get a ball into the box? He cuts back and finds Seedorf on our right hand side. Looking to take his man on. Suarez though with a good tackle. Seedorf finds Johnson on the edge. He takes a touch and finds Oostenbrink. He comes back into Rigo and will come out the other side into Gibson. Johnson plays a 1-2. Back with Rigo. Oostenbrink now finds Seedorf. We are building up very nicely here, though. We're not really getting close to their goal. Laker Matcher, ball over the top, looking for Rottier. Takes a touch, cuts back, ball into the box, looking for Messer with the header off the crossbar and scrambled clear. Good opportunity for us there. Messer really creating something out of nothing. And unfortunately, we are unable to find the back of the net. I've also just realised there's only 18 teams in the league. So Fortuna Sittard were bottom at the start of today's game. They've picked up three points all season. We cannot lose to these. After the start of the season that we've had, we simply cannot be losing teams like this. With all due respect, this is a must win and so is the game against Willem 2, but especially this one because we are at the home side. We need to be getting three points in this one. And Barlow now driving forward, allowed loads of room to drive into. He shoots from distance again. This time it goes just wide. Luca would have probably got absolutely nowhere near that. I'm going to give him some encouragement. They're playing a 4-2-3-1. Our 3-4-3 usually does quite well against the 4 2 Two, three, one, but we seem to be really struggling today. Maybe we've turned up expecting to win, but this is completely not on. 30 seconds to go before the halftime whistle. There is another highlight. Radic on the ball here. Finds Suarez. Back into Radic. Ball clip forward for Pantovic. Seed off underneath that. Johnson manages to win his header, but is a pretty poor one. And Barlow now goes back into the defence, and it's with Santos. He clips a ball forward. Surely offside there. Ooston Brink underneath it. Rottier doesn't win his header. And now Rigo clears up the pitch, looking for Messer on our left-hand side. Can he deliver ball into the box maybe cuts it back into Rottier back down the line looking for Messer takes a couple of touches into the penalty area and I'm not really too sure what's happened there the referees pointed to the spot I don't think that was inside the box I mean on the line I think counts as inside the penalty area VAR are going to check this here as we approach the halftime whistle no penalty is given but we will still have a free kick on the edge of the area no we didn't even get a free kick they somehow got the ball back how does that make any sense if it's not a penalty then why is it a foul in the first place I'm absolutely livid though 
after that first half performance is going to tell both our wide midfielders to basically attack and just get forward. We'll give them 10 minutes. If they've not changed it and sorted it out in the next 10 minutes, then we will look to make some more substitutions, although our depth is a big issue. While our starting 11 on paper is quite good, the depth in the squad... He's not great. We are now underway though for the second half. Well, we're 15 minutes into the second half and now it is now on the clock. We've not even seen a highlight. We're already on very attacking. We're just going to go all out attack at this point. Persin's not having a good game and he's on a yellow card again, but he's not really too tired. So I don't potentially really want to bring him off. You know what? Yeah, we're going to bring him off for Doran Bosch. He's had a good season so far. We're also going to bring on Dekia's maker for Oostenbrink and play him as a central midfielder on attack. In terms of some other substitutions, Rodriguez is going to go out on to the left of midfield. And Rottier is going to come off for Luke Plange, who's going to get an opportunity to play as a pressing forward in this one. We're also going to bring on... Um, I mean, it's not really too many options here, is there? Hendricks is going to come on for Rigo in the centre of the fence. We've got one more change, which we'll leave for now. Maybe bring him on the 70th minute. Goal kick here for Fortuna Sittard. That is hammered forward. De Kia's make it is underneath that. He only finds, though, a Fortuna Sittard player. Ball played through. Hendricks does well, though, to sweep that up. And he goes back into Luca With a form he's in, I'm surprised he's not let that one in. Ball hammered forward. Laker Matcha underneath it. Finds Dorenbosch. He looks down the line for Plange. On off the bench. Cuts it back for Laker Matcha. He's got a tapping finally he's taking him two attempts two bites at the cherry but Finn Laker Matcha has his fourth goal of the season he should really be scoring the first one we'll take it though we're back in the game we've got 20 minutes now to go and find a winner good ball down the line from Doran Bosch good play from Plange first time bowling on his weaker foot Laker Matcha should definitely be scoring that one he scores the second attempt though I'm not going to complain too much 20 minutes now to find a winner free kick for us here Dikia's maker deep into the box looking for Luke Plange headed away though and it will come as far as Doran Bosch. He goes back down the line into Plange. Cuts inside. Ball in towards the back post. And Lewis Gibson has his first goal for FC Eindhoven. Two goals in two minutes. And we have turned this game completely around on its head. We're not really playing too great. Plange and Doran Bosch though, off the bench, specifically, uh, sorry, specifically Plange, has been brilliant. And two assists for Plange. Great ball in. I mean, that is on a plate for Gibson. Towers over his man. Heads it into the back of the net. We need goals from the fence. And with 20 minutes to go, it's FC Eindhoven 2, Fortuna Sittard 1, and we are ahead for the first time in today's game. We do still have one more change left, and with 15 minutes left on the clock, I'm going to bring Van Dorm on for Messer. Go a little bit more defensive, play Van Dorm now more as a ball winning midfielder on the fend. Have Laker Matcher and Plange as our two strikers. 15 minutes to go, hopefully, we can see this one out. Pantovic picks up the ball in the midfield, Cordoba now driving down their left hand side. Can we get a tackle in? Pantovic now. Ball played back down the line into Vita. If they scored just after we've made the sub, I'm not going to be happy. They've hit the post and they've scored the tapping. Oh, but it's offside. Wait, is it offside? Are we going to go to VAR? I don't think that did look offside to me. I think VAR is going to give this goal. It's annoying when they do stuff like that because it gets your hopes up and it's probably going to be given, isn't it? The goal is awarded and that's just not ideal, is it? That literally the minute we've made the change to go more defensive and for some reason they've got a million players in the box and we've got no one there. And Moller has a tap in. I mean, I don't really know what we're going to do now. What can we do? Oh dear, that's, that's just not fun, is it? With 10 minutes left on the clock, I've decided to put both our wide midfielders to play more as attacking wide midfielders now, rather than just wide midfielders. Luca sends a ball long here. Laker matcher with the flick on. Dekia's maker finds Rodriguez. Ball into the box, looking for Plange. Hits the crossbar. Dekia's maker also hits the crossbar. Have you ever seen anything like it? Five minutes left on the clock. We've just hit the crossbar twice in the space of about three seconds. Six minutes added on at the end of today's game. It looks like it is going to be ending in a draw. 2-2 two -two in the end. Quite frustrating, to be honest with you. The matches like that and ones that we need to be winning. I'm not happy with that. We're training tomorrow. You don't deserve a rest off. And the guy who bloody cost us the game is the one who's demotivated. Are you joking me? Why can't we just have a half-decent goalkeeper? We actually nearly signed a four-and-a-half-star current ability goalkeeper, but he went to sit and be Ajax's third-choice goalkeeper. We are up to fourth, though, because no one else has played. Let's just hope that, well, from everyone from 10th upwards loses. Something that has come completely out of the blue, Jorge Seguiri is going to be departing the football club. He actually had an offer maybe two days ago. Yeah, it was literally two days ago on Monday in the game. We're now on Wednesday. He's gone to some team over in, I want to say Colombia, the Colombian second division, on seven grand a week. I mean, he's playing for us for free at the moment in time. He's on an amateur contract. He's not getting paid any money. So 
it make when he came in, he was our best player on paper in terms of star rating for a centre half. Six foot five, he's just not been very good for us. He's found himself as like a sixth choice centre half. He's gonna go there in January. That officially will go through on the first of January. So we've still got another couple of months of him, but I think for now we're gonna take him off the bench and we'll put Janssen on the bench on a permanent basis. Why, why would we train up another team's player? Janssen's one of our own youngster, not great overall and his potential is not great but he'll do a job he's a bit of a stopgap here we have it then here's how we line up for the second match of today's episode away to Willem 2 we've got Luca in goal a back three of Seedorf Rigo and Gibson a genie comes in and starts on the right Rottier on the left Johnson and Ouston Brink in the midfield a front three of Messer Kloss comes in as a target forward and Plange comes in on the right hand side two assists for him in the last game really impressed with what I saw from him so we need to see a little bit more of that we do currently have a couple injuries the Kia's maker is going to be out for four weeks with a hernia and G-Bells has currently got a little bit of a knock so we've put another one of our youngsters on the bench two star current ability four star potential I mean he's got 19 jumping reach and he's 6 foot 3 if we need to go for it we'll chuck him up front with cost don't forget this man is 6 foot 5 uh he also can't really head the ball. But this, despite that, we're going to stick some balls into the box and hopefully he can get on the end of them. We're going to give him squad number, th yeah, 34. Are we happy? Yeah, we're happy with 34. We'll give him that. Let's get into today's match. Then we need to tell the players once again, we've got the faith in them to make the difference. Because after last game, we really need the three points in this one. Drawing at home to bottom of the league is simply not good enough. I know the expectations at the start of the season were what they were and they might have changed now after the start of the season that we've had. Let's get underway though for today's game. Forget about the last game by winning this one and getting back to winning ways and pick up another three points although they're playing a 4-2-3-1 if it, the last game's anything to go by we might end up struggling in this one and Willem 2 have the ball at the back here they've got a free kick ball clipped into the channel Svensson will get onto that one only gets to the byline ball into the box Gibson should deal with that one he does not a great clearance so we can't allow a shot from distance or any shot on goal because Luca. I mean I think even if it's a good goalkeeper there they're not saving that but that's a really really disappointing goal to concede I mean, it was just all far too easy for them, wasn't it? It's a, a bit of a poor clearance from Gibson. He had a lot of time there to deal with it. Maybe not bring it down, but you've got to be getting more of a clearance on that. There's no one on this far side. Vereth with the strike. I mean, it's a great finish. Six minutes in, we're behind again. Plange picks up the ball here, and that is one of the worst tackles I've ever seen. Thankfully, it's the player whose name I cannot pronounce, so he's going to go off the pitch. 17 minutes in, I think we're going to stick it on attacking and just try and stick everything on them now. They're down to 10 men. I'm surprised Plange has not done his ACL or broke his leg after that tackle, because that was absolutely horrendous. Gibson now finds Kloss. He finds Johnson. He twists and turns and now finds Rigo. Kloss on the ball. Plays it back into Rigo. Gibson now finds Johnson. Can he play, pick a pass over the top? Rigo goes into Seedorf. He goes out wide into a junior. Back in the team and he plays the ball through into Plange with a form. He's in. You expect him to do something good with it and that is exactly what he does. The Crystal Palace Loney has his first official goal for FC Eindhoven. He's had a few disallowed for offside and all that sort of stuff but we're back level in today's game. It's Willem 1, FC Eindhoven 1. Brilliant play from a junior. Great ball down the line and from the tightest of tight angles Plange squeezes it in on his weaker foot. 19 minutes in. We're back level we've got the man advantage you only really think this game is going to end in one way at this moment in time they've not really changed anything apart from they're just not playing with a winger so I guess the the good thing to do would be to focus to play down the right side well approaching half time it looks like we are going to be going into the break all level I'm not too displeased with that obviously it was quite a frustrating goal to concede but with this formation that we're playing I feel like we are going to concede goals like that. I'm going to tell him it's not good enough. Eugenia is anxious. Everyone else seems to be fairly motivated, though. We'll give him some encouragement, get underway for the second half, and fingers crossed we can pick up another goal because two draws against teams who were bottom and second bottom at the start of today's episode it's just simply not good enough I know the bottom of the table is really hectic at this moment in time and it's really compact but we need to be doing better Luca sends a ball long Plange is never really going to get underneath that and now Bosch on the ball out wide into Svensson he goes back into Awusu ball played into Svensson surely offside there ball into the box header comes in and we've somehow conceded again and it's another goal that we've conceded with a header at the back post which Seedorf has lost it's a position I think I'm going to need to improve because as much as I like Seedorf, he's just not tall enough and a lot of teams seem to be exposing that as a bit of a weakness of ours. Lots of balls coming into the back post and Seedorf just doesn't seem to win enough in the air. 
and we fall behind again. That's really, really frustrating. I think now we're going to make some substitutions, to be honest with you, because it's Hornkamp with the goal, and just less than an hour on the clock, we are now going to make some subs. Seedoff is certainly going to be a player who comes off, and we are going to get uh, Boomers on for his debut. Plange is currently recovering from a knock. Um, I want to go more attacking, to be honest with you, but I don't really know what to do to go more attacking. I think for now, that's the only sub I am going to make, but I'm just going to put a genius to be a bit more attacking and Rotier to be a bit more attacking as well. Like what we did in the last game, Oostenbrink is now going to be more of a supportive central midfielder and Johnson is now going to play more as an advanced playmaker. We need to commit more bodies into the attack. We can't be losing to 10 men. Johnson, deep ball in, looking for the back post. Cleared away though, only as far as Gibson. Got his first goal for the club in the last match. He finds a genius. Out wide into Johnson again, bit of space for him to find Messer, goes to the byline, cuts back, ball into the box, a bit of a poor one, he will find a genius here on the edge, can he get a ball into the box, handball there, look like, referee says no, a genius picks it up once more, back into Seedorf, Johnson now, he nearly gets dispossessed but he finds Gibson, Johnson once more, can he find a ball through, Rottier finds Messer, can he finish, yes he can, Ruben Messer with his fourth goal of the season, the referee has got his finger in his ear, the goal is going to stand, we are back level, just moments after falling behind, Messer with another goal for the club, we signed him for a fee in the summer and to be fair the 31 year old, he's delivered so far this season, I have been fairly impressed, Rottier good ball through, Messer first time finish on his left foot, I think he is left footed and now we're on the clock, we are still going to make Make that substitution, get seed off off because I can't be watching any more of him just getting exposed really at the back post. Let's now make our final subs of the game after this highlight. A genius with a shocking throw in there. What on earth is he thinking? And now Willem 2 will be able to build an attack. Ball coming down this line and it is with Honkamp. He goes into Kabangu. A little bit of space from here. Plange though with a good inception. Messer plays it through. Looking for Luke Plange into the penalty area. Cuts back. Brought down. Referee waves play on. No he doesn't. The referee is going to consult VAR. He he did wave on a wave play on originally. He's going to go over to his tiny little monitor over here. The fans and players are on edge as we await the decision here from the referee. He comes back here. Is he going to award a spot kick? The scoreline currently sat at 2-2. Here we go. He says VAR are going to give a no penalty. Brilliant. What a waste of everyone's time. Right, we will now make them substitutions and I completely forgot to be honest with you after that, so a little bit of time has passed. There's just over 15 minutes left on the clock. Rottier is going to come off and we're going to bring on Rodriguez on the left-hand side. Johnson is going to come off and we're going to bring on... Huber's in the midfield to play as the attacking advanced playmaker. I'm also going to bring off Gibson, who's not having a great game for Hendricks. Final change of the game. Plange is playing well, but he's currently being hampered by a knock. So we're going to bring him off. We're going to bring on Doran Bosch up front. We normally play him on the wing. He's going to get an opportunity here to play as an advanced forward, see what he can do. Just over 15 minutes left. Fingers crossed we can find a winner. Well, both games have been fairly exciting. End-to-end, 2-2 -end, two -two draws. It looks like this one is going to be ending in a draw. Really, really disappointing. Back-to-back 2-2 -back two -two draws. It's not the end of the world. At least we've got a good habit of not losing games. But after the way we've started the season, I feel like it's probably... Four points dropped in today's episode. I mean, we're still within a chance of Europe. We're four points off fourth with a game in hand. It's not the end of the world. We're still in a good position. PSV are currently in the relegation zone. So are FC Utrecht. AZ are down there as well. This league table seems to be upside down apart from Ajax and FC 20 and Feyenoord. Ajax seem to be running away with it. They're two points clear with a game in hand, although Feyenoord win both of their games in hand and Ajax win their game in hand. Feyenoord are only two points behind. So overall, not the end of the world. I'm fairly happy. We're currently Currently, five points above the relegation playoff. We're currently, what's that, four plus three, seven points above the actual relegation zone. And we've played the same amount of games as Fortuna Sittard, who are rock bottom at this moment in time. I think we're in a good spot right now. Unfortunately, Luke Plange is going to be out for three weeks with pulled knee ligaments. He's been really impressive over the last two matches, especially in today's episode. But I am going to leave it there for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could join it, 20 likes, as I said at the start of today's video. That would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are on the road to 700 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post, notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out don't forget as well to drop a comment in down in the comment section down below to help boost the video in the youtube algorithm what are your thoughts on my new signings and the departure of Mateus as well thank you very much for watching today's video have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all very soon for another episode peace